Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 18th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. All I wanted to do was put a filter on where my beard went away and I, I lost all my video feed. Anyway, hey, I'm, uh, up, everybody. I'm the Wombat. It's nice to meet you guys. Hello. And from Western Canada, Dread Pirate Higgs, welcome. <laughs> and from over British Way, England, uh, there's John Richards, welcome. Thank you. And Boudreaux and Buffalo from Kentucky. Kentucky, right. I forget. Welcome. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'll take money on it. That I bet you're not. Right. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. The Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK. We'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going over a bunch of listener comments. I keep saying we're going to go over them. I intend to, and I want more of them. So we got our chat open. We're ready to talk. We got comments from last week. We're ready to go. Let's do a whole mailbag session today. But before we get into those, that steak and, and the encourses, let's open up with a nice appetizer and noodles, and we'll throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Hicks for a weekly invocation. Ah, Bob be me, Captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt waters. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness, for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me, in the presence of me meats. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog, my goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life, and I shall dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Guys, I do want to catch up with everyone before we go into some listener comments today. Boudreaux, Buffalo, it's also good to see you guys. We'll start with you. Buffalo, how you been? What's going on with you? I've been fine. Not too much. Uh, not too much at all, actually. Getting ready to, <laughs> teach, getting ready to teach again this spring. And, uh, Whoa, and okay. Change nice. course, nice. The, the science of climate change course. So that's good. That's fantastic. Also, uh, do you find any, so I'm hoping you're not getting any sort of uh, backlash or friction when it comes to teaching about climate change in an open and scientific way in the grand old state of Kentucky. Could you mind talking about that a bit? Not anymore. Ooh. When I, when I started the course 12 years ago, about 60% of the students didn't know whether or not it was real. Wow. That doesn't exist anymore. Good. I'm happy to say. Yeah. Neither does a healthy climate so <laughs> unfortunately yeah right that's about right Boudreaux good to see you too How, what's up with you my friend well one of us I won't tell you who one of us recently turned 79 so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah hey, right. still getting the Happy paycheck birthday. look at this Hang guy in there. Okay. Yeah. but uh, no I'm I'm most excited to see uh, Wombat here in Kentucky nice. next week it's we're yeah. gonna have a blast yeah, I was looking forward to the long drive too. I needed to like wear out my catalytic converter a bit. Like I, I put so many additives in it, I just need to burn them out. I'm like, I need a long drive. Where can I go? Like, that's hey, a real thing, on. yeah. I'm like, all right, fine, let's do it. Put some long miles in your car. It's good for it. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to spending a day in the life of Eric or a weekend in the life of Eric. Also, got to get you on a disc golf course. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah. I really oh, want yeah. to show you what that's all about. Yeah, I heard congratulations to you on that score. Yeah. <laughs> also, congrats. On a happy birthday we'll throw it up to dread pirate higgs and his weekly check-in on the on the quest for chaos yes 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 well what's going on I, now that you're now national news yeah uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> um well we've certainly had a lot more uh, people join up uh, the facebook group so uh, we're hoping to get more canadians so i've I put it out there to some of the main uh pastafarian groups that are international Cool. And uh, see if we can conscript some for manning the local cannons. So uh, nice. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, as you know, or may not know, a, a reminder that it is Talk Like a Pirate Day tomorrow, international. Okay. I know uh, in Canada, uh, our, our Prime Minister uh, declared it ad hoc as uh, the Memorial Day for the morning of the Queen. Of course, that's just another attempt of government to take over our religious holiday. <laughs> so I'm a little pissed off, but... No, you can me. say that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that counts. Uh, no, tomorrow, right. tomorrow is the wedding. We're having our first pastafarian wedding in Canada. Oh, good. I am the officiant uh, because I am a marriage commissioner. Uh, but we're going to have it scripted, of course, to conform with uh, pastafarian beliefs. So that should be a good time. And I'm going to live stream that on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate. Nice. At 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So come check out that channel if you want to see a cool wedding. Nice. You know what? I also say there is a Pasiferian holiday that is often overlooked by government, which is called Friday. And I find yeah. that to be one of the most important Saturday. holidays of all day. Like everyone's so happy that it's Friday. Got to thank a local Pasiferian. That's how you, that's how you really, you know, enjoy uh -huh. your Fridays. Just find that's one right. with a calendar on and be like, thank you for this day. It's a really great day. They'll be like, I didn't do it, but I appreciate yeah. the thanks. And you don't have to go to a church. All you have to do is eat pasta and regard it as, uh, you know, a symbolic of the creation of the universe by the great <laughs> monster. That's all. It's got to be. It's got to be the right pasta too. Like we don't take false believers in this room. All right. Anyway, guys, Joel, we got more people to go over. Uh, Larry Rhodes, I'm going to throw you under the bus. How you been? Hopefully um, not under the bus. You do like your motorcycle riding, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put the spotlight on you. What's how you <laughs> yeah? I, I rode for about I don't know, two or three hours yesterday. I had a good long trip up toward Brushy Mountain, and uh, beautiful day. It was like eighty. Yeah, uh, I did notice that going through the the shaded regions with the trees overhanging was cold. Yeah, so it's it's getting it's there. I mean, there. I can't it's ride in a t shirt anymore. I'll have to wear a jacket. You got two weeks of good weather before it starts getting impossibly cold to do anything outside. Yeah. That is yeah. life in Kentucky and Tennessee. It is what it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So enjoy it. It sounds like you got it. Yeah. John Richards, throwing up to you. One last, one last, uh, uh, I'm trying to find a nice, what's top hat, top drawer comments from you? Is that is that the proper phrase for it? Top quality. That's all I'm saying. It's like quality check-in from John Richards. <laughs> Top I'll take board. any of that. <laughs> give me, give me like all the 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 dressings that are going on because I know you got a lot of stuff going on. That's I have, yes, I'm, I'm getting more and more into YouTubing. So, for example, this morning I did a podcast. It's not not uploaded yet, but um, it was with some colleagues on the AUK Atheism UK Council on the subject of the transfer of the leadership of our established church mm. from one sadly dead monarch to the next monarch right so she not only reigned over the state but she reigned over the church of england too and all of that passes to charles the third and the, the question is how he will handle it and what changes might occur and how the archbishop of canterbury will react to this and all sorts of things. And furthermore, now that the country polled as 51% faith less, mm. should his title not be defender of the faith, right. but defender of the faithless? Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so my only comment, and I think, Dred, you're really going to love this too. We often talk about quantum entanglement on this show. Uh, to, you know, we, we noted that when the queen dies, the the next regency in line or become the next person in line immediately that instant becomes the regent yep. right they could be on mars and jupiter but it's still instantaneous yes. it's like they're quantum entangled people yes. what do you think about that dread <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it works on the macro level it works on the micro level i think it works on the macro level i think we see an instantaneous change of power right there and it's just like you can't track it it's faster than the speed of light and we know that is a thing it's like yes but of course but you're talking. you're talking about a cultural thing not a physical thing <laughs> it's still information <laughs> okay we can go <laughs> guys i know the mail bag is bursting at the seams we're going to go through some comments uh first one is from our last episode from our our favorite commenter data's trading room he does say that he had a story 
I'm going to feed into the story just a little bit. But he said, you know, based on the Darwin Awards, which we were talking about how people um, tend to die in very ignorant fashions based on their religious beliefs. He brought up the story of a devout believer who was sailing on a boat. The boat started sinking. The guy was about to drown. Uh, he was swimming in the ocean and he was looking for someone to rescue him. But he uh, had a boat that came along and he was like, no, God's going to save me. And then a bigger boat came along and he's like, no, thank you. You don't need to save me. God's going to get me. And then a helicopter came along and was like, hey, do you need any help? And the guy's like, nope, nope. I still have the power of God. God's going to save me from this water. And so he finally did drown. And in heaven, the guy met God and asked him, why didn't you save me? And God answered, I like drowning people. I mean, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about drowning people. That's me. That 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 joke has a different punchline, doesn't yes, it? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's mine. That's mine. That's a Tyrone it. original. Just remember, that. that's more accurate. Just remember, that's more accurate. Yes, yes, it is more accurate. All right. <laughs> the tie twist. There's another comment from Data Trading Room said uh, regarding our use of Latin phrases, saying, "I do not agree with cognito ergo sum. It is sum ergo cognito." I am oh, I am not because I think I think because I am when I am not I also think not. Any comments? Yeah, but on? Latin always I'm ends not sure with that makes sense. Sense. verb final language, right? Yeah. yeah. Verb final language, right? All right, we're going to get to some really nice comments today. And thank you so much to the room for the also really nice comments. This one's related to harmful beliefs deserve no respect even when justified by religion. And that they is usually a, aren't justified. Usually aren't, yeah, in the secular sense, absolutely not, but by the religious person, absolutely, right? In their own eyes, right? And right. so harmful beliefs deserve no respect, even when they're used as an excuse by religion, or even when religion is used as an excuse. Uh, case in point, uh, we had a commenter, uh, who, Seamus the Seagull, I am Jewish, so naturally I presume you already know what happened to my body on the eighth day of my life. When it, what in the world went through my parents' head as the mohel pulled out his sharp tools what possible oh. thought could justify skinning a non-consenting human being alive and you think about that i'm i'm also uh circumcised too i never really thought a lot of thought into it but i do recognize that like that's a thing that if i wasn't religious or if we didn't have a religious culture wouldn't happen and it causes a lot of in my opinion unnecessary surgery or harm there's some people who mess it mm. up there's some people who are like uh what do you call it? They mess up the circumcision and that person's just walking around with a ineffective a mutilated mo uh, yeah, mutilated penis. Moyle, thank you. Moyle, pronounce Moyle. Moyle, mm. thank you. I'm doing my best. You guys are keeping me up. John Richards, <laughs> yeah. what do you think? Well, some of the ways that's done, the, the operation is done, are revolting. I mean, the Moyle, having cut the the top of the penis the skin around the top of the penis he is then supposed to put it in his mouth and suck the blood oh that's not real is that real yeah that's real that that's not real, real. oh yeah, real. no and, and, and one or two people have been infected by germs <laughs> yeah well, sure. the mouth is more the most than, more than part of your body honestly and and about mm. six boys every year in the u.s die as a result of this operation the needless operation hmm this is beyond what I was expecting to hear. Today. <laughs> yeah, please stop that. And and, and there's no push or, there's no push or pressure to outlaw it because people are using religion to support the, yeah. the belief of yeah. like, well, yeah. it's tradition, it's our belief, we're gonna do this anyway. And yet abortion's illegal. <laughs> right. I'm just like, right. the, odd, the odd thing is that female genital mutilation, yeah. everybody throws up their arms in horror about, but male Not everyone. Well, a lot of people, yeah. Not, yeah. But male genital yeah. mutilation, you can get away with it. It's it's not a big issue. Boudreaux, I'd love to hear your point of view. Is there is there, you know, veracity of this with the Catholic upbringing? Well, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, I don't remember a whole lot of it, you know, from uh, from growing up. I, I, I mean, it's not like something we talked about in the locker room or anything sure. um, back then. But I, I did, <clears throat> um, we, we, as a family, we really struggled with this one uh, when Vincent was born. He, he, my son's eleven, and I wasn't as activisty as I am now in, in these kind of groups. Mm. Um, certainly, still atheist, and but I think the way 
Kristen and I resolved it, well, whether or not to, to have him have a, a circumcision, we talked to our pediatrician and we said, well, is it something we should do? And, and he said, you know, honestly, uh, if you're circumcised, getting him circumcised, you know, maybe there'd be fewer questions. Not like we're walking around naked or anything, but it, it, it stuck. Oh, we, oh. We, that's what we went with. Um, I've really regretted it since. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I wonder why a doctor would say that it saves questions. Questions are good things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Let them keep asking. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, it's more That's likely that he would pass it on without questioning to his next generation. Why exactly, would it pass right? on questions? Questions yeah. are good. I questions are good to have. Uh, Buffalo. So, oh, go ahead, Pujo. If you had more. No, I was just going to say, had, had I, have I, had I, if I ever make that time machine, I mean, something sure. Else. Yeah, I'll go along yeah. with you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can definitely, I can definitely think of times when it was inconvenient. Like when I was <clears> just based on new jeans that you wear and you're like, dang it, wouldn't it be great if there was like a sheet of skin? Right? Like there was? <laughs> what? Oh, Get out of town. <laughs> well, what in the world? All right. John Richards, what do you got? Well, the thing is, what's the motivation behind it? Because it's almost never medically mm-hmm. necessary. There's about 2% of males who need this operation and they don't discover it until they're in their teenage you know going through puberty Mm. and so the only reason for it is cosmetic it's branding it's saying you're one of us right yeah in the most committal way possible it's like give me your 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 actual junk and (laughs) scar it this is back in you know mesopotamian times it's like did you sanitize that you know there's no such thing as germs it's going to work out it's like then you are very committed when you do this yeah but it's almost like the the shibla thing yeah, you know the pr- pronunciation of shibboleth, the Hebrews. That's how they knew the enemies from themselves is the pronunciation. <laughs> wow! And so the circumcision is a way of identifying, yeah. truly identifying a Hebrew yes. from right. all the rest of the heathens. Right. Not only that, but like if you get a tattoo of a cross on your face or your chest, it's very hard to get out of Christianity after that point, right? Yeah. So like getting circumcised is that branding where it's like, hey, I'm an atheist, but you still yeah. look like a Christian. It's easier for you to be pulled back into the fold. It's like. Yeah. You've already been scarred. You might as well commit to it after that point. It's a really unfortunate system. Um, yeah, and I think if moving forward, if I do ever have like a son, I would, I would be very, very adamant against that, even to the point where it'd be like, um, okay. I mean, there's a lot of weird things that I probably let my son do or not do, but I'd be like, okay, if he wants to go to Vanderbilt, I'll let him go to Vanderbilt, but he's not going to get circumcised. <laughs> Something like that. He's not going to be a Georgia fan. All right, Larry Rhodes, any more thoughts on this? On the idea? No, that's, that's about it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Harmful beliefs don't deserve respect, even when justified by religion. We really do appreciate that point. Um, next comment is, the world is much more impressive <clears throat> when you realize that God didn't create it. And this one's brought to our oh, uh, brought by our own um, commenter, Victor. When you're taught about, when you are taught about God, you're taught that He's all powerful. He can wish anything to happen, and it will. I constantly am told to marvel at how beautiful and incredible His creations are, but I never did. I never really understood why I was meant to be impressed by something an all powerful being made. He's all powerful, after all. It shouldn't be <laughs> right. so impressive that He made a plant grow or whatever. <laughs> But after becoming an atheist, I started thinking more about the world and how it came to be, how living things started living, how animals and plants started evolving, how some species of ape evolved into Homo sapiens and practically took over the world. It's incredible. No God was involved in this. It was purely the beings themselves, which I find much more impressive. The world is much more impressive when you realize that God didn't create it. And I, I, I hold true to that. I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. Jared Pirate, what do you think about that? Well, of course, we hold that the flying spaghetti monster was the creator of the universe and uh, the world, and especially the you know the idea that gravity is not uh, is not a, a a pull; it's a push by the noodly lord pressing his appendages <laughs> down on people to keep them on the earth. That's why midgets are the uh, the first people because they were smaller and easier to keep to the earth. Okay. So many, so many under comments on that. Uh, <laughs> John Richards, what do you think about the idea of the world being more impressive when you don't have a religious belief? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's incredibly wonderful, especially when you realize that we're like ants looking at this amazing 
I'm, I'm lost for words. Amazing size, uh, distance, variation, diversity. And I don't like the way the, the Christians have stolen that idea and called it all awesome mm. and, and, and claim to own it. It's, it's theft. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Theft. Dread. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Boudreaux, what do you think? There's a really neat uh, uh, meme I, I, I see floating around occasionally where it's, you know, if if there is no God, then how do you explain this? And it's a picture of a beautiful sunset. Mm. And the very next frame is, you know, the 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 ionosphere and the bending of the light and the, you know, the, the science behind it. <laughs> like this is why, you know, this is why we see the colors we see. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful because of, of you know, just the <clears> physics <throat> of it. And I know I know Dawkins has a really neat quote about that I, I can't pull up in my mind right now that about how really it is just like your, as you said, Victor made the post. Yeah. Um, do, uh, I'm not sure <clears throat> if it's our Victor, but it is a Victor. Okay. I might be I mean, able to help you on that. Boudreaux. Oh, good. Oh, I was actually going <laughs> to point to you and you yeah. had the quote, but so well, yeah. it's, it's really, it's a, he wrote a book called the blind watchmaker. And so uh, of course, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, argument against this idea is, uh, you know, look at the trees. It must be so that uh, uh, God created it. But it'd be like finding a watch on a beach and, and saying, well, this watch is so intricate and complicated. There's no other way it could be created without there being an intelligence behind it. Hmm. But if that's the case for all creation, you're walking on a beach made of watches where watches grow out of the ground and washes com you know, or compose the... Uh, the water of the ocean and the sky is uh, made of watches like everything is watches it's watches all the way down as it might say <laughs> and and so that's the argument against this idea that you look mm. at something you can't incredible or irreducible complexity mm. uh, it's just it's a, a failed argument on the basis of that blind watchmaker thing Yes, I, I'm not a fan of the argument of complexity as far as like an argumentation right. for design. When we know that simplicity is the hallmark of design, if you ever spend any time in an actual engineering place or get paid for it, you will understand very quickly that the less complex something is, the more people will be willing to pay for, uh, will pay for it. And that's, that's the hallmark and beauty of design, not simplicity, not complexity. Oh man, we just got a bunch of comments on this one. Buffalo, do you have any comments on the idea of the world being more beautiful, more awe-inspiring when you take God out of the picture? Well, as a, as a biologist, uh, of course. Um, again, the, uh, the complexity of that and, and proliferation of, of uh, life is, is awesome. And it's just inconceivable that it could have come from one source. Okay. Evolution itself, I think, speaks against it. Yeah, evolution yeah. itself is a very, very gnarly way of trying to improve things with living bodies. But yeah. yeah, it's it's a very interesting path of how we got here. Far better than any fiction. In my opinion, fact always beats out fiction. Uh, I want to get Larry a chance to get in and then uh, dread. Larry, do you have any idea or opinions on the <clears throat> idea that fact is more impressive without fiction? or uh the well world or without an explanation God. a fairy tale explanation there you go because of course if he's all powerful like like the commenter was was saying there's no reason why he couldn't create every kind of, of complexity that we see in nature mm. but the thing about it is hallmark of the hallmark of good intelligent design is simplicity not right. complexity absolutely and if if God had really wanted to make us so that we could live in the universe anywhere we wanted to. He'd make us out of titanium, um, be one piece that would bend in any direction we want to and have a computer for a mind. Uh, he doesn't have, he didn't have to follow all this evolutionary um, zigzags going up through the biological ladder. Yeah. Um, he'd ideally make us out of Teflon, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that way, at least we wouldn't need umbrellas. Even titanium can be, exposed to oxygen what's up jed what's up well I, I was just i was actually listening to a podcast uh, around the topic of darwin's um study of evolution and it, it you know it occurs to me as a result of that that he started out as a believer and he he really struggled with uh, his belief 
in the in the light of evolution so having you know come up with this uh, the theory of natural selection and evolution by uh, natural selection uh, he wrestled with that for a long time and at the same time did not have a mechanism for it so he had a theory for which he did not have uh, a good understanding of how it could work it wasn't until francis and crick came up with the uh, uh, discovered the uh, D dna mm. uh, like almost a century later or more um, that it finally had a mechanism but again uh, he had a theory without a mechanism and that helped him struggle with his beliefs nice yeah so, he was he was born to that theory and and it was he was probably circumcised mm. <laughs> yes a little, a, little known, a little known fact is abraham lincoln and and darwin were born on the exact same day they have the same birthday nice yeah regarding um the idea of why would a pediatrician want a kid to stop asking questions questions are a good thing photo flogger says stealing a version of this for my best man's speech i'm giving in a few weeks well said mate you know i i like the quote but i wonder how he's going to fit that into a best man <laughs> yeah <speech. laughs> I, I really wanted to see how that's gonna add up. And what's his new wife gonna think yeah 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 <laughs> upstanding standison says i've always felt that complexity of the universe is an argument against god if he's all powerful he could have created things that didn't need food or water and thereby avoided starvation and dehydration he could have made beings that don't need oxygen and avoided drownings and suffocations. He could have created a world in where light was simply an inherent trait rather than needing it to come from solar fusion. Instead, the complexity of the universe and life's nearly perfect fit into a hospitable environment speak to chance, adaptation, evolution, and evolution, not omniscience and omnipotence. Larry, what do you think? And he wouldn't have had to create a universe where, or a world where people and other animals had to kill each other to, exactly to exactly yeah right. like look at that beautiful right. bird it's now food for something else you know right. john richards what do you think well the whole thing is just a claim isn't it mm. there's no there's no connection between this god and the diversity and amazing variation of uh, the cosmos very and true it, uh, unlike paley's watch you know that story that dread told us we know, we, we know how watches are made. Right. We can even show you watchmakers. Right. Yes. We can, they we have can no recognize. Link. Yeah. They have no link between their claim and the observations that we can all make about the universe. There's yeah. No even, even more problematic, there's no frame of reference for what something that isn't a creation is or what something isn't a creator is if everything in the world's a creator and you're surrounded by yes. everything that's creation. If you yes. don't have a frame mm -hmm. of reference, you have no basis to claim that something is a creation when you can't yes. recognize when it's not. You know, oh. it's it's the most simplest thing in the world. Lack of frame of mm -hmm. reference. Uh, well, you says I'll say it again. Wait, wait. again. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Larry. We need, we need to take a break. We're at the bottom. We got of the five hour. more minutes before <laughs> the end. We got five more minutes. We I think we can fit them in. We can fit these okay. in. All, All right. right. So, well, you says I'll say it again and again. Once you realize that nothing supernatural exists, the world is a much nicer place. And I agree. And you, you are w u u says similarly. My wife, a Christian, asked if I thought we were destined to be together <clears throat> when we were dating. She knew I'm an atheist and was then struggling to come to grips with it. And I said no, and my no upset her pretty hard until I can explain that I found it far more precious that, according to my beliefs, our meeting was a culmination of a lifetime of decisions that, if any single one was made differently, could have meant that we'd never meet. And that mm. improbability is far more beautiful than some sky guy determining that we would end up together no matter what. I imagine well, that there's some additional well comments on the phrase "sky guy." <laughs> well, spoken by a male, right? Well, <laughs> don't mansplain me my improbability. You know, I do find the improbability of us being here, even just talking this conversation, far more beautiful than it being preordained. Yeah, and right. it's the difference between. Oh, go ahead, John Richards. I, I would have thought that how they came together was pretty immaterial. What matters is how they're going to go on in future. Mm, very nice. I like that. That's that's the motto for a movie that's about to happen pretty soon. Guys, I think we're now at the bottom of the break. We're going to go into, after we come back, uh, a tell-all from a man who's pastor out of them as an atheist to his community group. And then any additional comments that you guys are free to put in, uh, we'll see you back after the break. Larry, why don't you take us out? Sure. Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 
Two. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk just for a moment about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK is founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, and we have over a thousand members. And we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at the Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room in Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. If you can't make the meeting in person, we also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meetup. If you'd like to join us, email us for the link at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or go to the website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. Just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and look for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. one. Wombat, where do we want to pick up? Some quick comments from last for the first half. Uh, One True Glove says, so glad that my mom had the heart and avoided the brutal removal of my penis tip skin. Like, seriously, what's going on with that? Jacqueline Marie 11 says, it's genital mutilation to to do um, circumcision or or obviously female uh, genital mutilation. We attempt to protect women from genital mutilation, but this happens in other culture. I'm sorry, we protect women from genital mutilation that happens in other cultures and conveniently ignore all the mutilation happening to male infants in this country. Also, I'm going to add in that this happens to intersect infants as well after birth. A lot of doctors let the parents choose the sex they want their genitals made to look like if they're ambiguous, and parents have zero rights to make these decisions for their kids. Um, I agree on both of those points. Yeah, uh, for on, sure. on top of that, we got another comment. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I can't keep up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So I had a different comment that I'm going to try to scroll up to if you guys. OK, hold on. I'm going to go into Messenger so I can pull this up. All right. So uh, we got a comment from a person who would like to remain anonymous. Hello, Ty. I'm writing this out of annoyance, then distress and not directed at, any, at you or anyone on the show. Just venting. Long story short, I came from a Seventh Day Adventist family, fourth generation. And in SDA churches, if you want to get baptized, you need to complete, you need to complete a guide with your pastor or presbytery. It usually lasts six months. I expressed my wish to be baptized a year ago. <clears throat> However, during that time, I started doubting my faith. And after eight months of studying and praying with no responses whatsoever, I stopped believing in God. Everyone expected me to get baptized as I completed my preparation. And when I told my family that I don't want to join the church, they called the pastor over for a private meeting. He always seemed like a nice guy, so I was honest with him. I told him everything about my lack of belief and my experience with religion. We ended up praying together. No response, of course. Fast forward four months, I stopped going to the church because everything seemed so cultish and because I was tired of their ignorance and cognitive dissonance in general, just to find out that this evening, my pastor outed me to the entire church and to my parents because they didn't even know I was an atheist. <clears throat> I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. My first mistake was to trust someone from a church slash cult. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Well, uh, on that subject, last <clears throat> week, some, some of you were in the show that I do later on today, the Global Atheist News Review, where we express our views on the news. And our New York panelist, who is uh, of Jewish extraction, he said that de-baptism is relatively easy. What he finds difficult is de-circumcision. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so anyone have any additional comments on that story from, from our own anonymous writer? Dread, well, or, Dread you, go on ahead. You know, there, there may be, uh, in biology, there may be the opportunity to, once they discover how, you know, salamanders regrow their tails and whatnot that, uh, you know, foreskins may be mm. able to grow back somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put some stem cells around there or something. Yeah, yeah. And then, then we'll all be able to regrow. And that means that when we take up drumming, we'll all be able to say how much we love beating the foreskins. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. There is, there is a salient point I'd like to, oh, go on, Bredro. Uh, uh, what, well, if, if you're on a point, I was just going to comment on the, uh, um, 
on the, on the person that made the uh, comment. But you go ahead first. I was just saying, like, the reason why, why do we have a system where someone tells their secrets to a person who's the authoritarian head of a organization? Like, the the rule of the position of power should be to serve the people that you're working with, right? Not to be the the secret keeper, the gatekeeper, master of master of whispers of your congregation, because it only makes them harder to leave if they want to go somewhere else, because now you have all this blackmail Black ammunition, right? Um, yeah, and we have an agreement. Uh, so that's the general theme of the comments that we're getting is that it's basically a win-win for your pastor. Uh, Derma 5 says this, either you're an example of what not to be like, or you become a notch in the belt of Christianity as an atheist who <clears throat> found God again. In either case, it has to be made public. And in the end, he only cares about himself and his soul, not yours. Uh, Bujo, what do you think? Yeah, so so yeah, along that point, uh, it seems to me like there's got to be a little bit of a benefit cost analysis going on with the with the church, where it's like mm. it's probably not worth their time to try to convince this person. Let's spend our efforts on convincing these others that'll turn quicker, or or, right. or at least keep them in line. Well, so yeah, right. it, yeah, there's also the the thing about shunning. Uh, if he's not going to be in the church, you don't want your church members to have contact with him. No. And so what better way to do that than tell him? Right. Buffalo, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Uh, you know, again, you got to keep the pews full, right? Right. So you got you to play to the crowd. Yeah. Right. It's, it, it's, you, it's such a sad thing when a person actually genuinely needs help in connecting with a God. And you're talking to a whole group of people, the leader of people who have this instantaneous <laughs> access. Instead of just being like, oh, I'll Google that for you. Like if I forget my phone and I need to find out how tall ostriches, ostriches are on average, I could just talk to another guy who's like, hey, do you have connection to the internet? Yeah, of course. Let me figure that out for you. I can't talk to God. Can you help me out? Guy whose job is I talk to God for a living. Well, I'll pray for it for you. And uh, maybe I'll come back in four months. This is like, dude, yeah. do you have this connection or not? And right. you're not giving him any more meaningful ideas about why he should stay in. Not only when you out him, but when you can't help him when he's in his time of need. And, and what do you, why do you, why do you talk to somebody who's not merciful or who has created a not non -muse, a merciful world? Yeah. Right. Um, hot mess express <laughs> one. I love the name says he only did that for you to have your family, friends, and other church members manipulate and pressure you until you crack under the pressure and return to the church. Um, There's a lot of that. Yeah. It's, it's really unfortunate. I don't. Oh, uh let's see uh Seamus says rule number one for dealing with cultists nice is different than good and i i found that to be absolutely true uh and and there's a big difference in that when you see like a very smiling mormon or a, a happy jehovah witness it's like they're nice but is that good and there's a difference between the two like you can be pleasant with someone but recognize whether someone actually has the faculties to be able to make morally justified bold decisions or not and nice is not always the best good is all right how do you guys feel everyone good mm -hmm. okay cool i'm gonna open up the comment well again <laughs> so i had so hot mess express also follows up with i had this pastor obsessively try to convert me to christianity for months and would go on these insane rants in the pulpit indirectly talking about me Every Sunday, long story short, I ended up ghosting him, and I'm sure that sent him into some kind of narcissistic rage, knowing he wasn't going to I wasn't going to be the center of his attention anymore, or he wasn't going to be the center of my attention anymore. I'm getting tired of Christians, and I'm starting to think all of them are bad. <laughs> I'm just reading yeah. it. Well, Christianity the difference between is Christianity. bad ideas and bad people. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But. You know, there's limits, uh, I would say. Well, like yeah. I like to say, Christianity is as Christianity does, right. not what they say. Mm, right, right, right. I can also say, like, Christianity puts out so much bad stuff under the, under the gift wrappings of good things mm -hmm, that right. even just quietly pushing it along as a good person, just, you know, either being completely ignorant to that and just allowing that river to continue to flow or causing no inhibition to, or critical thought and just being another one of the faces that are purported that Christianity is a good thing can be in its own right a bad thing. And like, if you, you, if you're an adult, you have to know that or not, and you either support it or you don't. 
And I feel like that's culpability, even in the lack of inaction. Um, silence is a really, really bad thing in, in the vase of what we're dealing with right now. That's my thought. What do you think, Dredd? Do you think that's fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't sure. say it makes you automatically a bad person. <clears throat> I'd say like it makes you uh, deeply irresponsible if you decide to continue to push Christian agendas by inaction and, and not yeah. exercise your thought. If you're a thinking person. You, if you got to yeah. think. Don't. Yeah. What do you think, Dred? Well, I, I was just going to add that um, <clears throat> it's important for, for atheists and pastafarians also to be aware that um, we're not attacking the people who hold these beliefs, but the beliefs themselves. And it's often difficult for people who hold these beliefs to recognize the difference. Right. Because we're all so very invested in our beliefs. Mm. We, we conflate our, our sense of worth uh, with our beliefs. And so when you attack a person's belief, they sometimes take it as an attack on them, a personal attack. Mm. And it's always important to make sure that we're trying to uh, um, maintain an atmosphere of respect uh, and and willingness to even change our minds in right. order to the right. to the evidence. So right, we yeah. we do <clears throat> we should portray what we want to, to to you know what we're trying to encourage. We should act in, in accordance to that. Yeah, such an example. Yeah, John Richards, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this follow up from Hot Mess Express. Uh, the liberal ones allow. <laughs> The liberal Christians allow this kind of behavior to continue by downplaying it, saying that not all Christians are aggressive and egotistical. Yeah, all of them might not be like that, but most Christians enable the Christian zealots by not calling them out. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Same with Muslims, right? You know, it yep. doesn't matter which religion you're talking about. It's the ones that hold it, you know, not as, uh, uh, not as extremely, but their silence, of course, it, it essentially... Uh, allows the extremists to get away with it. Mm. Yeah, it's it's sort of a reversal of what Groucho Marx said. You know, he said, I wouldn't join a club that would have me as a member. Well, <laughs> don't join a club that's got these other fundamentalist members. Right. Or supporting them, right. even tacitly. Boudreaux, we have a question about SDA. And since you uh, expressed some interest in that, I wanted to throw this one out to you. Is SDA... By question by Fuzzy Buzzy, is SDA one of the extremist cults? What 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 is SDA? Do they hold a funeral? Are they one of the cults that hold a funeral for you and have your family treat you like you, you're deceased when you're when you leave the religion, huh. or is that one of the other cults? Yeah, my interest in this was not because of my knowledge of SDA. It's just I, I was interested in, in that the topic of someone getting outed like that. That was interesting. I don't know a whole lot about SDA, honestly. Mm. Um, I, it 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 would would not surprise me to find out that you know they would throw a funeral for someone who leaves um, but i don't i don't know actually yeah what, what, what is that <laughs> sunday sunday seventh, or seventh day, seventh day yeah. oh okay yeah i i work with some of them at our job they're like i said nice they're nice people <laughs> but i've had i've had in-depth you know uh, socratic examinations with them and they're like yeah, I believe in the Bible. And I'm like, you believe everything in the Bible? Yes, absolutely. I, there's no question about it. And even the thing on slavery. Well, let me tell you about slavery. It's like, it's never just like a no. It's just like, well, <laughs> it was okay back then because they were okay with it. Were the slaves okay with it? Probably not. I'm like, okay, this guy, Oops. you know, you're an adult and you still haven't- It's an like, equivocation, right? Thought. Yeah, like the slaves had a point of view too. And and it's very easy to overwrite that. But um I so hot mess express. I'm going to let this one last one. <laughs> Honestly, thinking about it, dealing with my own religious trauma and reading other atheist stories about Christians trying to force them to convert. This is really dumb and childish. This whole thing. When I think about it, we have fully grown adults throwing temper tantrums and threatening people in order to, for them to believe that some ancient book is true. And in my head, it's not just about the book. It's about the power system that they developed or inherited as a result. And this is entirely a power play. And so when, you know, your pastor wants you to confide in them, him or her, uh, or most, most of the time him, because like I said, it's a power play. When they hold those secrets and maybe even use them against you to pressure you to go join back into their fold, it's all pressure. It's all power play. And so mm -hmm. you got to be able to see that for what it is. It's not the ordained holy God talking to you. It's a guy doing whatever he can to keep that paycheck rolling. <laughs> You know? Claiming to speak for God. Mm -hmm. 
claiming yeah. to conquer yeah. God with the book of claims without claims. That's <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's yeah. up, Buffalo? Uh, I'd like to bring up again the, the, the idea of believe in belief genes and the fact that everything's on a Gaussian curve and there are zealots down at the at one end of that curve that in fact are hardwired to have a, a need or a strong propensity toward believe in belief. And all mm-hmm. you need is a couple of those that are outspoken and right. you've got the situation we live under. Mm-hmm. I do want to give a shout out to the anonymous posters for, for recognizing that the system was a system and like getting out, you know, hopefully he's still out or she's still out, but good job on your own part. And like I said, there are atheist communities that you can reach out to. There are people you can talk to and we'll be happy more to more than happy to, to continue the conversations with you. If you'd like to, if you don't want this one sided <laughs> podcast sort of system, we need to have you on the show if you want to. Boudreau, did you have any? Yeah, yeah it kind of makes me wonder. And I think we've talked about it maybe in the past, you know, how many um, uh, church leaders uh, are so um, invested in their career, so to speak, mm-hmm. and yeah. they they lost their belief a long time ago. Right. But they, I mean, they can't they can't give it up. It's their livelihood. Uh, mm-hmm. They've got family members. I know. I know. Uh, That's what the of, clergy project is all about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Right. 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 Yep. Um, it, yeah, the same thing can happen in families too. You know, the husband and wife, one loses their faith and yeah. realizes that, you know, coming out as an atheist is going to, you know, ruin the relationship. So they, yeah. they stay, they hide it. You know, you know, the funny thing is the opposite never happens. Like you never have a scientist who stops believing in science and then science stops working. Right. It's, right, it's right. always just like, dang it, I don't get nucleuses, yet I still have stoichiometry. Like, what in the world's right. going on here? <laughs> What's this nonsense about atoms and all that? Yeah, this is like, why does it still keep working? I, I have all my doubt put into this whatsoever. All right, uh, guys, we're getting close towards the end of the show. Thank you guys so much for leaving comments. Um, feel free to leave more on uh, my channels. Let's chat. You can feel free to, to post a comment and we'll get over into it in future episodes of the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, Buffalo, let me just say, I didn't feel like it would be a true show unless we brought up Gaussian curves. So I do appreciate you bringing that up. I'm still waiting for the Sam Harris drop from Boudreaux though. So we'll, Boudreaux, I'll give you the opportunity. Anything you'd like to plug? I, I went with Dawkins this time. Just trying to, okay. I'm trying to spread it out a little bit. The four horsemen, they all need equal. equal. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. No sweat, no sweat. Buffalo, anything you'd like to plug before, uh, uh, our customers come back for next week? No, I'll cede my time to someone else. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Dread Pirate Higgs. Sure. Anything. Uh, so I'll make the Sam Harris plug. He has this great podcast called Making Sense, uh, in which he interviews uh, an amazing array of intellectuals and scientists and uh, thought leaders. He also has a uh, an app called Waking Up, which uh, is an exercise in or a, a, a pot. Uh, an app around mindfulness uh, so as opposed to prayer and other kinds of meditation mindfulness is something that has no uh, baggage around it uh, with respect to a di- deity or, or divinity or whatnot nice. um shall i plug my channel absolutely oh, okay mind pirate m-i-n-d-p-y-r-a-t-e i broadcast this live stream at um, 7 a.m pacific daylight time and then move on to the Global Atheist News Review at 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So check out my channel. If you like, please subscribe. Love to see you. And also, I'm more than happy to entertain all comments that you might want to leave there. So Great. check it out. Mind Pirate. Uh, I'll also throw this out, too. Next month, I'm going to be doing a talk at Dalton State College uh, about cheerleading for I don't know, which is some often <clears throat> very rarely cheerleaded for but as a good answer for when you don't know something there's no better response than i don't know and we got to get in a better habit of saying that john richards listen i got a whole notepad ready to go tell me all the i have a whole agenda as you would say what tell me tell me what's uh what's the plan what should we plug and pay attention to coming up well free thought channel is the place to go where you will see global atheist news and one of the items of news you'll like this week is that Fewer than half of Americans may be Christian by 2070. Mm -hmm. Then there's Global Atheist News Review, which Dredd and you, Ty, are in. Dredd's just plugged that. It happens later on today. Uh, I don't put it up live because I want to spread my stuff out throughout the week. But uh, you'll be able to see it on 
Free Thought channel later on. Then last night we had a fantastic Free Thought Hour, the interview show, with a South African professor of paleontology who takes on creationists in his private time. So that was mm, that was really cool. good. <clears throat> That's well worth That's watching. <clears throat> then on top of all that, I've taken to debunking Frank Turek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having a lot of fun with that. Little short <clears throat> video where I take some of his work and chop it up and insert my comments. Um, I also want to do some two more plugs on top of that. Um, Dred, I'm glad you plugged the clergy project. Also, I would also recommend Recovering from Religion, which is yep. a website anyone can access if you are SDA and leaving, or if you're a Jehovah Witness and leaving, if you're a Christian and you're just doubting. If you have questions in general, don't put them away. It's good to ask questions. Questions That's are right. a good thing, as Dred Pirate would say. Check <laughs> out Recovering from Religion, the website also. Larry, listen. I still don't know what atheism is and all it's all about. We're going to have to just call it what it is. We apologize officially. Let's just, you know, chalk one up to Christianity and call it the end of the day. What, what no, no, saying? no. I, I have a book on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Atheism. What's it all about? Thank you, Dredd. There it is. There we go. Uh, no, no, no. No, Dredd's is called uh, What's It's All About. Oh, boot. Boot. it's different. Oh, yeah. boot. Yeah. And uh, it's on out. It's available on Amazon. But my content can generally be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and articles on the subject. Uh, my YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter 5 or Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. By the way, if you're a clergy member but have come to see that the claims of religion are not justified and start doubting, there's help for you at the Clergy Project. Just search for Clergy Project or go to clergyproject.org. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week, every Wednesday night here in Knoxville. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.